podcast uh, Trip Tech Studios with Brendan Heinst. Uh, you're the mastering engineer, recording engineer. Recording and mastering engineer, yeah. And uh, well, the reason we're here is that, well, I think two weeks ago you had a live stream about 32 bits. About that, yeah. And uh, we had a talk beforehand, uh, which was pretty interesting. And then I said, you know what? We're going to drop by and do an interview because you have a lot to tell <laughs> about high res, uh, about recording, and why uh, the 32-bit uh, 384? 352. 352, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about three things, and we're going to separate them, uh, for your knowledge, uh, in three interviews. So stay tuned. Let's first talk about high res. Uh, there's a lot to tell about you as a person, but maybe <laughs> some other time at our studio. Yeah. Uh, so if you're interested, please let us know. But let's talk about high res first, because you were quite enthusiastic about the 32-bit floating point recordings. Why? Why? Um, it's a very good question. Um, in any case, to, as, as a recording format, it never hurts to record in a, in a much higher quality or resolution that you would need. No. As, a, as a final product, you know, bandwidth and, and data really is, is really cheap nowadays. So it yeah. doesn't really matter. So that's why we actually started recording in 32 bit. As soon as the software and our AD converters supported it, we were just like, doesn't matter. We already record like one to two terabytes every session. Let's, <laughs> let's just make it one and a half to three, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so that's how we, that's how we started out. Yeah. We've always been doing 352.8, so eight times 44.1 yeah. kilohertz. Why not the, the, the multiples of 48? Before we started using the Merging Happy, we had converters that only worked at 352.8. Ah. Also because um, it's, it's exactly eight times 44.1, so yeah. theoretically, we thought at least, um, you know, people always say you have to have like integer values, um, so um, for a 44.1 kilohertz CD, for example. Yeah, because it's a music format. It's not a film format. Exactly. So yeah. multiples of 44.1 potentially work better than 48, 96, etc. Exactly. Okay. We've, we've conducted a couple of listening tests now between 352 and 384, but we're still yeah. a little bit on the fence about what kind of format we should choose for, for the future. So. Okay. The jury's still out on that. <laughs> I think it's more complicated than a lot of folks think it is. Um, but is there a limit? Is there a point where there's no audible difference anymore? I think it's it's the law of diminishing returns, really. Yeah. Um, you know, the difference between 44 kilohertz and 96 is staggering, of course. Mm -hmm. and, and between 96 and 192 is quite big. But it's it's not huge. Um, no. The difference between 192 and, and DXD, for example, is small, but it's it's noticeable. Yeah. Um, especially since the fact that if something's recorded in 352, there's no sample rate conversion going on if you play it back at uh, 352. True. Yeah. Um, but with every step you go up, it's you know it, the differences get smaller and smaller every time. So. Do, do, are, do you need a certain level of a system to actually hear it? Um, it's a good question. Um, yes, but it's not really about any price point at all, no? um, because okay. some really cheap equipment can actually show DXD audio pretty well. Yeah. I think it matters um, more um, how your DAC and how the clock inside your DAC functions. Does it work well at high sample rates? Some yeah. DACs just work better and some AD converters just work better in lower resolutions or lower sample rates at least. Okay. So I think it has to do with jitter. Um, as well. Like, I thought jitter was higher when uh, the, the sample rate goes up because the mistakes the clock makes. Exactly. Tolerances get smaller and smaller. Tolerances get smaller, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Exactly. So I think at, at like the higher you go resolution wise or sample rate wise, yeah. the more dependent you are on your, on your clocking, um, which I think makes a lot of difference. Um, yeah. Um, what's more important? Um, because you have bit depth and you have sampling rate. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe first for our viewers, it's, uh, uh, it's a good idea to explain the differences between the amount of bits you have and the sampling rate you have, you use. Sure. I think um, it, it starts out with, with sampling rate, of course. Um, yeah. Like how many times per second do you make a sample and, and convert that into some kind of digital 
format. Yes. The the night quest Shannon Law um, says that you can record half of the bandwidth of your your sampling rate. So yes. if you record at forty four point one kilohertz, you can record theoretically up into twenty two point oh five uh, kilohertz yeah. of bandwidth. Yeah. Um, so so that's a first. Um, then of course you have to filter it, and there's a whole lot of things going on with filtering that make it interesting to record at high uh, sample rates because let's let's face it you know the, the the older we get the more above like 18 or 19 kilohertz we we don't hear anymore no <laughs> um it's it's only about unfortunately yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah there are still a lot of people out there who have amazing hearing still at later ages but yeah. it's it's most of us don't yeah um, but I think it, it comes down to filtering. It comes down to how your AD uh, pre-processes the audio and how your D to A um, processes audio to, yeah. to convert it back into analog. Yeah. I think at that point it matters a lot what your resolution is. As for bit depth, um, very simply put, in, in terms of dynamic range, 16 bits should be enough. It's 96 yeah. kilohertz of dynamic range. You should have a very good setup and a very good listening session. and should listen at, at ridiculously loud levels to, to make it clip. interesting. Yeah, yeah, to make it clip or to, yeah. to hear any difference. Uh, difference lies in dithering, um, of which we're also going to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so dithering makes, makes quite a bit of difference between 24-bit and 16-bit. Um, and then we have the 32-bit float format, of course, which yeah. is um, a whole other story on itself as I'm well. I'm very curious about that. <laughs> But uh, okay, but I thought maybe I was completely wrong. Then, of course, bits is dynamic range. That that's pretty easy. The more bits you have, the more dynamic range you have, and that's especially handy when you're mastering because you have more uh, overhead. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought sampling rate was also the amount of detail you can capture. In a way, you, yeah. you make more samples. So intersampling, that there, there's less time, so mm -hmm. you could you can grab more of the detail of a maybe a harmonic or uh, something like that? or uh, Purely, um, and, and I'll probably cor be corrected if I'm wrong, yeah. um, um, purely bandwidth-wise, um, it's it's limited to half of, of the sub yeah. rate that you're recording at. Yeah. Um, but due to whatever needs to happen um, before you enter the digital spheres, so to say, you can you lose a lot of, of quality and you lose a lot of detail sometimes, um, especially when improperly doing the conversion um, mm -hmm. at lower sample rates. And I think at yeah. higher sample rates, it becomes a little bit easier to retain all of those. Okay, okay. So you qualities. can retain more quality and detail because of the bandwidth you have. Yeah. All right. I don't, yeah, well. and, and the lack of filtering makes a big yeah. difference as well. Yeah, we'll get to the filtering part <laughs> later on. Because, um, well, let, let's let's just name the elephant in the room. The, the latest format that was released is MQA yeah. for us audiophiles. And it's supposed to be lossless, mastering, quality, authenticated. Uh, but there's some... There, 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 there's some Controversy. Yeah, <laughs> let's call it like that. Uh, what's your opinion? I mean, I'm not a studio guy, so I have no idea. Mm. Uh, I talk to some people, and they all differ in opinion and in, in yeah. Um, the let me first say I'm I'm, I'm I think MQA is is a bit um, of a too little, too late kind of thing right now. Um, I think it's interesting that at some point you want to format that even though it's lossy even though like they they try to say you know uh, <laughs> we're keeping yeah. things lossless it's 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 not really lossless it's it's it is a lossy format but yeah. um it would have been very interesting um a, a number of years ago a great deal of number of years ago um when bandwidth was still a real issue or at least yeah. here in the netherlands um you know it would be amazing to stream at at super high resolutions while you know also being able to do anything else on your internet or yeah. even to be able to do it at all true so i think there it would have been really amazing but nowadays yeah. like many people uh, have a good fiber connection we have a good fiber connection at the studio we have one at home i think most of your your uh, viewers yeah. will actually have a, a good at least adsl or, or fiber broadband. kind of connection yeah. some kind of broadband yeah so does it really matter but for now? mobile use maybe for
for mobile use, it, it could be interesting, yeah. Um, but I think there still, um, there's a whole lot of smoke and mirrors going on with MQA that I personally do not agree with too much. Yeah. I think um, the, 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 the close nature of the whole format, not specifically knowing what's going on, um, to me doesn't doesn't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I as a mastering engineer, before I want to step into a format like that, I want to know exactly how it works, what it does, um, and and what all of the other features are to do with it. Um, and I think some of the claims that they make, um, I'm 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 worried they might not be able to do what they all claim to do. That's that's what I'm a little bit worried about. So I think um, were this um, question asked like 10 years ago, yeah. I would have probably been a, a bigger proponent of the whole format. Um, yeah. It would have been amazing to, to be able to stream at such quality. Nowadays, I don't think it really matters that much anymore. And I think... Yeah, the, the, the whole argument, I think you're spot on with that, is bandwidth is not an issue anymore. Yeah. Storage is not an issue anymore. Oh. Uh, I mean, our SD cards are... 512 gigs. I mean, that's just crazy, but it's 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 pretty normal nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think high res. I mean, okay, two terabytes in a recording session, <laughs> still a lot. <laughs> yeah, but th that is multi-channel audio. So and in in a couple of years, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. that, that's the whole. Uh, yeah, well, we're making progress, especially on storage and in bandwidth. Uh, it's it, absolutely. Um, well, let's get to 32-bit floating point DXD then uh, what, what's the, 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 the biggest advantage you have with that format um, yeah so first of all it's it's the whole um, editing mixing mastering process that you do in in, in 32 bit float or 64 bit float actually yeah rune does 64 but that's quite ridiculous I think if, if your processor runs at 64 bits that's that's it's bad it, it, well it doesn't really matter actually I mean the 32 bit <laughs> float is already more than plenty, yeah. uh, right? You have a 24-bit um, sort of like integer part and then the 8-bit the exponent part of 32-bit. Of and that accounts for almost 1,600 decibels of dynamic range for processing. It's plenty. Plenty. More than plenty. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> so um, what happens is, is we record everything, everything gets mixed, and, and that all happens in, in floating points. Uh, yeah. Because of the added dynamic range, you make sure that nothing is is clipping internally um you know things can can clip in your mixer if you work in a fixed point system without you even knowing it yeah um, I know. so <laughs> in, a, in a 32 bit you always know that there's enough had room to to do all yeah uh, all those kind of things that that's that gives peace of mind I it think. does yeah, yeah absolutely um you you probably had some recordings in the early days that you thought everything was right at least i had Plenty of times, so, yeah, this this is great. And afterwards, you think, oh crap, still a hundred samples are clipped. It it can happen, yeah. Um, yeah. That's why we were always really cautious about you know Definitely. gains and everything. Yeah. The thing is that if you don't do any weird processing on it, um, and and you just make sure that your preamp gains are you know there's nothing happening yeah. there in terms of clipping. You, you should be safe, yeah. um, but you, you never know. Of course, you no. never know. You should be really sort of cautious when mixing. And in a in a, in a floating point system, there's a lot more leeway there, um, as long as you make sure that things are not converted internally to yeah. some kind of fixed. That's like fifteen hundred decibels of headroom. Yeah, I think something like fifteen hundred and sixty-five decibels. So that's that's more, more than, than enough. Than, exactly, more than can happen naturally yeah. in either case. So yeah, it's, but then on the playback side, I mean, at the recording side, I get it. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like with video, if you have more data to work with, you have more playroom. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And with audio, it's the same. You, exactly. you, you, you can compress. Uh, you, you can compress the shit out of it if, if you like. <laughs> but on on the playback side, uh, a lot of modern converters work with. 32-bit floating point DSPs before mm -hmm. uh, they convert to analog. Yeah, and you say the whole processing part has already been done by us, mm -hmm. to to say it in layman terms. Uh, so it doesn't have to calculate anything. So rounding off errors are no longer uh, uh, no longer there. Mm -hmm. What we've noticed, at least so far, um, is that some DACs and some transport systems mm -hmm. are able to 
use this floating point to their advantage um, yeah. in the sense of um, some DAX have DSPs on board. They use DSPs for a variety of tasks um, yeah. to, to add things, um, to, to equalize things maybe, to okay. um, even room correction, all sorts of stuff like that happens in mostly at a sort of like floating, uh, floating point system. If you're able to get that floating point system like from out of our mastering system here into mm -hmm. a download and, and into your, your in the DSP of your DAC, be it uh, some kind of DSP that happens in your streaming software, like Rune, for example, or on your DAC itself, mm -hmm. and the DSP happens in a correct way, yeah. <laughs> then there's a lot of advantage to be had. Okay. Of course, there's a big asterisk there because you, of course, you never know no. how your system's going to respond. Um, so, so far, we've been having a lot of great results with the Mola Mola Tambaki, for example, yeah. Um, yeah. which sounds amazing and can make use of, of this 32-bit float format to do with it whatever it wants. So that, that's, the, that's the converter by yeah. Mola Mola. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not a bad deck. <laughs> so absolutely not. No, it's it's very high end. Um, yeah. and, and there are, of course, more converters that can make use of it. Um, yeah. but, but did it, you test some stuff with like normal deck chips uh, like a Sabre deck or AKMs or? The chips themselves, um, no, but we've tested a couple of converters. We've also had some feedback from some of our customers at the web okay. shop uh, yeah. saying this works or this doesn't work or does my DAC work and we'll have to do some more research. Yeah. The thing is that um, in on the specs page, it's never really that obvious um, what the DAC really supports internally. So no. does it make use of this format? So it's it's always a little bit of a guessing game. It's a, it's a matter of trying out for yourself. Um, we, we are keeping an up-to-date list on what, um, what we've tested ourselves mm -hmm. um, and, and what what our customers say currently at the shop. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you just have to figure out for yourself um, or check with the manufacturer of your, your DAC. Is it more expensive to buy a 32-bit float uh, file? It is, yeah. And that's mainly due to the higher bandwidth that we use. So <laughs> there's, there's two things of that. One is, of course, 32 bits is one and a half times bigger than 24 bits in either case. Yeah, yeah. But then also our 24 bits uh, masters are FLAC. Um, so they're already compressed a little bit. Um, we try to keep the compression relatively low because sometimes very big compressed files can put some more strain on the CPU of your streamer and therefore sound different than, or may sound different. That's than an interesting one because a lot of audio files say FLAC sounds worse than WAVE. Yeah, a lot of people do and it, it it but it's can. not because of the file format. Absolutely not. Of course, no. Flack no. is like like making a zip file of your of your away file and yeah. then just like hey, shipping it. Well to that's, that's it. That would mean the internet doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it's yeah. the CPU uh, power that's needed to decompress it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought in the early days. I did a lot of testing with Flack and Wave, and I never heard any difference on my homemade computer. Yeah. For audio. As long as it can handle it yeah. properly and, and with a lot of headroom, it doesn't really matter. No. Not at all. Okay. Um, but on some systems, for example, some integrated streamers that are not super powerful, exactly. we don't want to put the compression ratio too low because it doesn't really matter at some point. But our 32-bit um, uh, floating point format is all on wave because uh, yeah. FLAC doesn't support floating no, point. No, I didn't know, but... We neither, actually. No, yeah. no when we came about to, uh, to, to export this, uh, basically the only option was, was wave. Yeah. Now we found out that there's also AIFF, which has the advantage of having metadata as well yeah. on it. Yeah. So that might be interesting for the future, but we still have to do some more deeper digging into which programs support it, um, so, how uh, can we uh, add the metadata, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. But wave, wave tagging is problematic. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you yeah. import our tracks into Brune, it actually does pick up somehow, probably through Grace Node or yeah, whatever. Possibly. I'm yeah. not an expert on that. No. Um, but it does pick up the metadata pretty well, and it okay. should work. That's but cool. um, since it's wave and it's it's times and a half um in uh, the bit depth in either case yeah. file sizes are pretty huge uh you're talking i think 12 gigs for a stereo album 
Um, yeah, it's which pretty big. Yeah, so our hosting goes up um, exponentially yeah. as well. So we, we have to make them a little bit more expensive than the DXD versions. What we are now offering, though, is that if you purchase a 32-bit DXD download, you also get the 24 bits. Oh, that, that's, in, that's nice. In case your system yeah. doesn't play nice with it, yeah. or you and just want to... compare. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's only one question remaining then. Uh, so we talked about sampling rate, bit depth, DXD, 32-bit floating point, and, and all that stuff. Uh, I was wondering, what what's better in terms of quality, DSD or DXD or PCM? Uh, you always have to wonder, is, is the DSD really native, yeah. native DSD, so to say? Well, um, is, it, is it? <laughs> is it? Um, in some cases, yeah. Um, in other cases, no, not really. It, it depends. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you have recordings that are made in DXD, for example, and are then exported to DSD. Um, so you have some of the advantages of DSD, um, depending on whether your DAC likes it or likes yeah. it better than DXD. Uh, in some other cases, the recording is made in DSD um, yeah. and, and then exported in DSD. But um, in in classical music and jazz music and any kind of music, you you do a lot of editing, mixing, mastering, and that kind of stuff hmm. on the record itself. Um, you can't do any processing in DSD, no. unfortunately. So it's it's a in, in that terms, it, it's a hard format to work with. It is a difficult format. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I personally prefer DXD because yeah. then you can just record, it's edit, flexible. mix, master in the same format and just yeah. export it in the same format. So it stays native PCM. Exactly. Yeah. But there are some really nice um, advantages of DSD as well in, in the A to D and D to A um, design of, of the, the, the equipment itself. Yeah, because it's in, in some perspectives, it's an analog format. It's a very analog yeah. kind of format, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, it sounds very analog as well in a certain regard. Yeah. So, um, and obviously, you know, almost no need for filtering, that kind of stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of really cool things about DSD. Yeah. The problem is though that if you make a recording in DSD uh, and you do, you make edits in, in some other format because you have to. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, we work in Pyramix. Pyramix can record in DSD, and then if you want to edit, yeah, um, all of these crossfades that you make mm. uh, happen in DXD. Yeah. Um, if you have like two or three that are like two or three milliseconds, then okay, who's gonna notice? <laughs> you know. Um, but <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you know, it, for for a lot of classical recordings, um, it's it's. There's a lot of terribly difficult music out there for people yeah. to play. Even the best players in the world um, cannot always do things perfectly in one take. So no. there is going to be some editing involved um, on most of the CDs. Actually, most of the CDs that, that the viewers will have at home are, are, in a lot of cases, heavily edited. Uh, made from, from hundreds Classical of music. Classical music, actually, yeah. Wow. Uh, it's okay. a little known fact, actually. But, yeah. um, you know, so... You also have like some some pieces. For example, we just recorded a Schumann album, and um, even though it's not really easy music to play on on piano, this this piano player was super well prepared. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's still it's pianistic music, so it's 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 meant to be performed well. Yeah. Um, he only needed a couple of takes, but then there's also music that is just inherently unplayable almost um and and even like the you know we have the casado suite that we just recorded yeah. um with two cellists and however amazing the cellists are it's always going to be a question of um how difficult is the music to play or like how um how cellistic is it um yeah. is, is it written so in those kind of instances um they're still going to be a lot of different takes that you have to combine and, and make the best out of. Musicians are, as we are as well, perfectionists, um, even yeah. more than we are in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so they also want the very best of the best of every take. And again, if you do that in, in DSD, then all of these edits that you make are done in a different intermediate format, and in most cases, the XD. Yeah. So whatever you do um you, you keep on converting back and forth um so uh, there are hardly any real native dsd 
recordings. Yeah, there are, there are some, um, but some, if if yeah. the recording contains any kind of editing, yeah, then it's yeah. it's not completely one hundred percent native. It can be ninety nine point nine, and again, who's gonna notice? I don't think so. I, th I think no. it's a matter of semantics, yeah, uh, yeah really. Yeah. But true. It's it is what it is. Um, a lot of tape transfers though. Are Those are real. Yeah, yeah. Completely mastered yeah. analog and analog then transferred into DST. Transferred to DST native. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Probably not going to be any editing or, yeah. or mastering or whatever done in the digital uh, domain. Yeah. So you can just keep the DSD um, stream, as it were. Interesting stuff. Next time we're going to talk about dithering. Uh, also interesting stuff. Very nerdy Very stuff. Very nerdy stuff. <laughs> Very nerdy stuff. <laughs> but hey, it's Alpha Audio, so uh, we're just a bunch of nerds. Um, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.